Holy Spirit, you are good. Jesus Christ, you are good. Father God, you are good. Thank you for being so beautiful and caring. And thank you for being in control. Please open our eyes and our ears and our hearts and our minds to your word, my Lord. Help us to bring glory to your name. Give us strength. Give us your healing. Fill us, Holy Spirit, with yourself. And I pray that living water would flow from us and quench the thirst of people that are bone dry in their spiritual lives. Praise your name, my Lord. Praise your name. Open our eyes and our ears and our hearts and our minds to your word. Amen. Acts 26 Then Agrippa said to Paul, You may speak in your defence. So Paul, gesturing with his hand, started his defence. I am fortunate, King Agrippa, that you are the one hearing my defence today against all these accusations made by the Jewish leaders. For I know you are an expert on all Jewish customs and controversies. Now please listen to me patiently. As the Jewish leaders are well aware, I was given a thorough Jewish training from my earliest childhood among my own people and in Jerusalem. If they would admit it, they know that I have been a member of the Pharisees, the strictest sect of our religion. Now I am on trial because of my hope in the fulfilment of God's promise made to our ancestors. In fact, that is why the twelve tribes of Israel zealously worship God night and day, and they share the same hope I have. Yet, Your Majesty, they accuse me for having this hope. Why does it seem incredible to any of you that God can raise the dead? I used to believe that I ought to do everything I could to oppose the very name of Jesus the Nazarene. Indeed, I did just that in Jerusalem. Authorised by the leading priests, I caused many believers there to be sent to prison and I cast my vote against them when they were condemned to death. Many times I had them punished in the synagogues to get them to curse Jesus. I was so violently opposed to them that I even chased them down in foreign cities. One day I was on such a mission to Damascus, armed with the authority and commission of the leading priests. About noon, Your Majesty, I was on the road, a light from heaven brighter than the sun shone down on me and my companions. We all fell down, and I heard a voice saying to me in Aramaic, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It is useless for you to fight against my will. Who are you? Lord I asked, and the Lord replied, I am Jesus, the one you are persecuting. Now get to your feet, for I have appeared to you, to appoint you as my servant and witness. You are to tell the world what you have seen and what I will show you in the future. And I will rescue you from both your own people and the Gentiles. Yes, I am sending you to the Gentiles to open their eyes so they may turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God. Then they will receive forgiveness for their sins, and be given a place among God's people who are set apart by faith in me. And so, King Agrippa, I obeyed that vision from heaven. I preached first to those in Damascus, then in Jerusalem and throughout all Judea, and also to the Gentiles, that all must repent of their sins and turn to God 
and to prove they have changed by the good things they do. Some Jews arrested me in the temple for preaching this, and they tried to kill me. But God has protected me right up to this present time, so I can testify to everyone, from the least to the greatest. I teach nothing except what the prophets and the Moses said would happen, that the Messiah would suffer and be the first to rise from the dead, and in this way announce God's light to Jews and Gentiles alike. Suddenly, Festus shouted, Paul, you are insane! Too much study has made you crazy. But Paul replied, I am not insane, most excellent Festus. What I am saying is the sober truth. And King Agrippa knows about these things. I speak boldly, for I am sure these events are all familiar to him, for they were not done in a corner. King Agrippa, do you believe the prophets? I know you do. Agrippa interrupted him. Do you think you can persuade me to become a Christian so quickly? Paul replied, whether quickly or not, I pray to God that both you and everyone here in this audience might become the same as I am, except for these chains. Then the king, the governor, Bernice, and all the other others stood and left. As they went out, they talked it over and agreed. This man hasn't done anything to deserve death or imprisonment. And the gripper said to Festus, he could have been set free if he hadn't appealed to Caesar. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Father God, there's lots of gorgeous stuff in this passage. Just thank you for the fact that Jesus, in this passage we hear, the words that you said, that nothing can oppose you, nothing can stop your kingdom moving forward. And I thank you for that. Nothing stopped Jesus. If anything, the persecutions of Christians those thousands of years ago made the, made the church grow as people were amazed to see people being willing to die for their faith. And I thank you for that, Jesus. When you have something prepared, nothing can hold you back. And I praise you for that. Thank you that, Jesus Christ, you are alive. You are living. You are true. As I said yesterday in my, in my last reading, we're not insane. Festus thought that Paul was insane. But he wasn't. He's full of you, Jesus, and convinced of the truth. And I pray that we would be the same. You're glorious and beautiful and holy and wonderful, my Lord. And I praise your name. Amen. Amen.